And we're back. So hi guys, I'm back from yesterday. And for today, we actually have two NFT projects that's gonna tell us how did they build brands in the bear market. But before we begin, let's do a little bit of introduction. I think, let's start with a one-liner. What's the one-liner for Longstreet and OnChain Monkey? And then tell us what you guys do for the project. One-liner? Yeah, one-liner. OK. Um, OnChain Monkey is building uh, one of the best Ordinals collections on Bitcoin. Solid. Enough said. And communities. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Longstreet. I'm a musician, composer, photographer, and educator in the space. I started on Stax a couple years ago uh, with a photography collection. And over the past couple of years, I've released over 40 collections. Um, and a lot of collaborations with other, uh, other communities in the space. Perfect. So after the one-liner, let's make it more brief, right? So I want to know what's the origin story for OnChain Monkeys. I think let's start there. Like, what was the story? How did it start? What's the mission? Sure. So um, my name is Amanda Terry. I'm co-founder, chief operating officer of Metagood. Metagood is the company behind NFT collection on Chain Monkey and Ordinal's Place Ashura. Uh, we founded the company in May 2021. My two co-founders are Danny Yang, who's our CEO. He founded the Stanford Bitcoin Meetup in 2013. He founded MyCoin, which is the largest cryptocurrency exchange in Taiwan. It's been operating for about 10 years. And he founded Bloxier, uh, which government agencies use for blockchain analytics. He sold that in 2018. Um, my other co-founder, Bill Tai, has been in, and he's our chairman, has been in crypto since 2010. Uh, he was the first investor in Zoom. He seeded Dapper Labs, Canva, 23 publicly traded companies on the board of HUD8, which is the largest digital asset miner in North America. And we came together in May 21 uh, to figure out how can we use Web3 to create wealth for communities, but also do real world good. So on September 11th, 2021, we launched OnChain Monkey, which was the first 10,000 profile pick collection done in a single Ethereum transaction. So that was all on chain, SVG files, not JPEGs, really first of its kind. That was our Genesis collection. Um, from then, we launched a Karma collection that uh, also the metadata on chain. Um, the art was done by a Hollywood animation team behind Ice Age, Rio, and Ferdinand. Um, we launched in June our OCM Dimensions collection, which was the first NFT collection uh, to use recursion, so parent child relationships. It was 3D animated, interactive. Um, we when uh, the Ordinals protocol launched in February, Danny actually inscribed all of our 10,000 Genesis monkeys onto Bitcoin. So it was the first 10,000 collection inscribed on Bitcoin. Uh, and we announced in the last month that we're actually moving all of our Genesis collection, 10,000 to block nine sats, so some of the earliest sats um, ever used uh, before end of year. That's coming actually very soon, like in the next month. Uh, and we're also porting our Karma collection. So 20,000 Karma monkeys over to Bitcoin as well, all using the Ordinals protocol. Um, we also launched, uh, I should just mention, Ashura, which is a curated marketplace uh, for high value digital assets. So we truly believe uh, Ordinals is where high value digital assets are gonna reside over time. And so we have our own marketplace as well, which has OCM dimensions. And we also created the Asprey Bugatti egg collection. So we worked with um, two iconic luxury brands, Asprey the jeweler and Bugatti, to create a generative art collection, NFT, um, on Bitcoin uh, that correlates to 111 physical eggs that they've been selling. So we brought kind of these iconic luxury brands over to Bitcoin as well. There's a lot of collection. And <laughs> great. I want to move on now to Longstreet. So how did you start it as an artist? And then we're going to dig in deeper with OnChain Monkeys and then you. But then we want to hear your journey. OK, I'm an artist. What made you go to like, OK, I'm going to do NFTs now? Yeah. <clears throat> I've been a creative person my, my whole life, so as a photographer and a musician. Um, and when I saw the opportunity for NFTs and what that could do to enable artists to connect to new audience members um, and really develop your own style, uh, you know, releasing digital collectibles, I was really attracted to the space. I liked Stacks because it was you know, building on top of Bitcoin. Um, and so in the early days, there wasn't a lot happening. Like This is just within the last two years. I started with a collection of 100 images called uh, Venice Visuals. 
Um, I just recently moved out of uh, LA and out of Venice Beach, so that collection is, is going to be very special to me. Um, I started with that, and then I started reaching out to other communities, and I did collaborations with uh, Project Indigo, writing music for uh, their on-chain video game that they, that they made. I collaborated with Megapont and Nonish and the Weirdos and uh, just anyone else who was in the community. I was reaching out to them and saying, I love making music, I love your, I love your project and what you're doing, and I want to contribute. Um, and I think that that, uh, that, that platform uh, and that the opportunities of reaching out to and collaborating with and contributing to other communities um, is a really good, uh, is a really good like, method for artists to grow and to reach new audience members. That's great. And then I think everybody's curious, because then I think for OnChain Monkeys, you said you want to create wealth for the community, and then you move from one chain to another. I'm just curious, what was like the decision making behind it? Now we're moving to ordinals. Why? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of credit goes to um, you know Danny Yang, our CEO. I mean, he's been building on Bitcoin for a decade. It's actually a funny story. When he was running the Stanford Bitcoin meetup, Vitalik came to pitch Ethereum. Bill, my other co-founder, was there and passed. So he hasn't got all of the uh, awesome early, you know, pre-seed companies. But uh, you know, very OG. So just imagine investing in Bitcoin 10 years ago, right? We think that's kind of where we're at with the ordinal space, right? So it's the largest L1, most decentralized, most secure, not a security. Um, a lot of people haven't, you know fully looked, maybe in this community they have, but a lot of people haven't really looked under the hood for ordinals, but it's a very elegant and powerful protocol, and it's not even at a 1.0 version release. So it just started in February, it's at a 0.9 version release. We've already seen over 35 million inscriptions and taking up about 50% of the Bitcoin ne uh, network activity, which is critical moving into halving, which we all know is happening you know, in less than 200 days. So we think it's just like the perfect time to be building on Bitcoin. Um, inscription costs are still relatively low, as we know, as block space gets more used up, those, that will, those fees will be more expensive. Um, and so we're super excited to be you know, building on Bitcoin. And it's, it's early, it's early days, but we couldn't be more bullish about bringing our community um, onto Bitcoin. Yeah, it looks like building on Bitcoin is the coolest I'll, thing in I'll, town I'll at the moment. Mention one thing, and our community as well. So you kind of say, like, how do you build a brand? I mean, we do a lot of Discord chats for our holders. We do a lot of spaces kind of educating people on Bitcoin, on the ordinals market. Um, when we did our Karma collection, we actually put 50% of our revenues um, into a DAO. So we put about 2,000 ETH, so you know, $3.8 million. We uh, actually, our community, we put a couple proposals together to help subsidize the cost of bringing our Genesis and Karma collections over to Bitcoin, and our community um, like almost unanimously voted. We had one of the highest turnouts in votes, like over 4,700 votes, um, to fund over 850 ETH to Metagood to bring our collection onto Bitcoin. So it's not just the leadership from Metagood. I think what I'm most proud about is that we've been able to educate our community on ordinals and all of our holders are actually voting for their DAO funds to be used to help uh, subsidize the costs of the migration. Got it. What about you, Longstreet? What's your story? Why are you building on ordinals? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, for me, the, the journey has been from Stacks. And then when ordinals came out, I thought that was really fascinating. Um, and with the restraint of the, of the size that you have comes great, um, a unique challenge. But I think as an artist, there's great opportunity in working with restraints. I really like this concept. Um, and I'm also an educator. And something that I do with my students, if they're ever getting you know, tripped up, like, for example, if you say to someone, write, here's a piece of paper, write something it can be really hard to start. But if you say, here's a, paper, here's a piece of paper, write a haiku, it just has to be 575. All of a sudden, like, having the parameter and the limitation, it takes you in a direction and, and it can help be inspiring um, because it, it's like a, an unlock. It's like, well, I don't have to write just anything. I just have to do 575. And so that little mental hack, that men mental unlock can lead you down a creative direction. Um, being a musician and someone who has made a lot of music video NFTs, Stacks can accommodate that because it is stored on IPFS traditionally. Um, but that's a real challenge on Bitcoin because you really, 
you have to pay um, a lot to get your information on chain. And I think that's valuable because people are going to choose, uh, they, they have to be more diligent and, and they have to choose what they want. So you can't just have, I know a lot of really crazy, silly things have been, like dick butt is, is, is uh, the, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, ordinal, right? Um, people can choose whatever they want to inscribe. But with that size limitation, you really have to, it has to hold personal value to you. So the challenge for me as a musician and a, uh, someone who makes multimedia content and music videos, um, it's been challenging. And I've experimented a lot with, you know, shorter music videos, compression. Uh, you can get something down to a WebM, and it's small enough to inscribe, um, but still expensive. More recently, we've seen a lot of tooling, so much tooling becoming available. And I know we really are early days with this, but um, like, for example, what uh, Jim is doing with, this is number one, uh, inscribe, he's, he's created, and you may have seen in the demo day yesterday, he's creating an on-chain music player. And I've experimented a lot with this too. So for example, I made a song and a music video, originally to be released on Stacks, but then uh, we decided to pivot into ordinals. So then we had to figure out, how am I going to take this music video that is you know, 40 megabytes big? Um, compression won't do it, because it's too long. We want a full song with a music video. So how are we going to make it happen? So Jim uh, has created some tooling where you can, uh, basically the process was me taking the, part, t taking the song apart, just the audio first, into 26 samples. Um, that can then be you know, added together through recursion. And then visually, we need, to make, uh, we need to make the visuals too. So theoretically, this is all going to come together. We're, like, we're very close to doing this. But the tooling is developing, and it's happening, because the limitation in block size is a challenge, but it's unique. And through that challenge, we can do new things. So it's early days. The challenges are, are driving a lot of innovation. So it's an exciting space. And just to be just to bring it back to Bitcoin as L1, like that's the best place to be. Um, I'm a, and the, yesterday, the, we had a great discussion on uh, L1, L2. I think there's a great relationship to be had there. Um, so here we are, like, like in these waters that, that are going between L1, L2. Yeah, I mean, I, just, I think you made a really good point about IPFS. And like most NFTs on Ethereum are off-chain. So they're JPEGs pointing to IPFS systems. Um, you don't pay your AWS bill, et cetera. You don't really own those NFTs. So um, when we're looking at ordinals, we're always talking about digital artifacts, right? They're actually on the Bitcoin L1. And it's very different. I mean, think about it. I guess the analogy would be um, you, know, you own a digital certificate if you own something that's off-chain. That, so you, you know, I own a digital certificate that I own this sculpture, let's say a piece of work. But uh, with digital artifacts, you own the digital certificate, but you actually also own the actual piece of art, the sculpture. So it's very different. Um, and I think the market's still processing that, learning what that means, uh, and, and, and kind of the value of actually owning a digital artifact versus owning a digital certificate that points to an IPVS system. Very different. That's great. So after talking about the infrastructure, because our title is talking about how to build an NFT brand in the bear market, I want to talk about sustainability. I, I, I'm an NFT holder myself, but I think the biggest question that I have is, I think a lot of NFT projects release collections after collections, and then me, as a person who actually buys NFT, I feel like it's a big value extraction for me as a participant in the whole community, right? So, and especially in the mirror market, people actually feel that way. They're like, oh, not another collection, not again, another one, right? So I think for you as a brand like OnChain Monkey and Longstreet, how do you actually navigate this kind of circumstances within the community members, or do you come across it? Just like, we would love to know more. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, OK. Uh, I mean, our, our Genesis collection from two years ago was actually a free mint. So all the people that came in have actually created, we've created quite a bit of wealth for them. Um, there's been a bunch of data, uh, the website went down, I don't know, but it used to show num percentage of profitable trades, and for our Genesis collection, OnChain Monkey was consistently top. It was like 99, 98% profitable trades. So, um, you know, we also, when we created the OCM Dimensions collection, 
Um, it was a very, very low mint price for that. Those 300 dimensions, that's the first collection using recursion, 3D animated, um, streaming from a Satoshi. Um, in fact, there's a great Medium post that Danny wrote uh, called, you know, all, it's about you know, OCM dimensions, just Danny Yang, OCM dimensions, Medium post. Um, and you know, we had one of those just sell for four Bitcoin like a month ago. So one of the highest selling ordinals in recent history. So again, a lot of wealth creation for people. So I think um, as, a, as a company, as a community, um, we're not about trying to extract value. We're always trying to figure out how do we create value for our community. You know, obviously the company owns a lot of the NFT assets. All of our founders own a lot of the NFT assets. So we're always every day trying to think about how do we create value for the community. Yeah, I, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just gonna say, and then from an artist perspective, like how do you, you know, deal with it? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of pressure for your work to have utility or for it to bring value to the holders because like number go up, you know, the promise that buying your work now, you will continue to grow as an artist and your work will be more valuable over time. That is always possible, but it's, even though it's tempting to make that promise, I think it feels better as an artist just to say, does this piece hold intrinsic value to you? Do you like it? And if you like it enough, it means to you, it's, you know, an artist should be making art that makes you feel a certain way or conveys your uh, experiences of the world. And that should be enough on its own. Like, that's the utility. But having utility, the promise of number going up, it can also be a great way to, uh, to bootstrap projects and communities. So that can be valuable, too. And I've... Uh, in one of my early collections, I released, um, I released um, some music, and someone said, what's the utility? I said, well, the utility is that it's music, and, and you like it. You dance? You yeah, dance exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that really got me thinking, how can I, as an artist, offer utility? And it is one of the great use cases of NFTs, and, and, and the utility can be you know, token gating for community access, um, special... Uh, video and, and like special content that you make only available at certain holders. It can be early access. Uh, counterfeit culture is doing this a lot um, with early access to minting or minting at a discounted price. So there's so many ways to bring utility in. I mean, there's people are, are using utility also for um, for digital rights and and royalties. Maybe you like can imagine if Taylor Swift said, "People of my uh, of my." people that hold my NFTs are going to be able to split 1% of my, of my profits. Like, you can use utility that it, way. Actually. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's one aspect. It's one tool, and that's utility. Um, and I've experimented with and without utility. Okay, since we're talking about like the ways on how to create utility, especially for you at like Onchain Monkeys, I'm just curious, is there like a special sauce that you feel like, okay, this is the way to build an NFT community, an NFT brand? I think you guys did a lot of already at Onchain Monkey. If you're gonna break it down, like what are like the key ingredients if anybody in the audience will actually want to launch their own brand in this kind of market? Um, I think one thing we did very differently than most NFT collections. When we started, we defined values. So if you go into our Discord or Twitter, you'll always see exclamation point R-I-S-E, RISE, which stands for respect, integrity, sustainability, and, and um, enrichment, which are values that we ascribe to as a company. And so we kind of, the energy you put out is the energy you get back. So, you know, yeah, at the beginning, sure, we had you know, a lot of you know, Flipper, DGen, et cetera, but we actually have a lot of builders in our community who subscribe to those values. And, um, you know, we've invested a lot in our community team, which, you know, some of them are volunteers that are awesome mods. And then, um, you know, really, you know, communicating a lot with our community. So, you know, we do special Discord chats. We've done, um, we did an online poker game with Charlie Lee, um, Owen Wilson, Woody Harrelson, who are um, investors in, in our company. Um, almost... You know, at any event that we're speaking at from a um, you know, conference perspective, we always do nice gatherings as well for our community. So I think, um, you know, there is a lot of utility to kind of bringing people together in a space where, you know, we're all PFPs and all over the world, so it's sometimes hard to meet. Um, but I think you make a good point, too, as, as we're moving to Bitcoin, um, you know, it's, it's not just about, like, utility and 
what have you done for me? Because in, in the current revenue model with you know, royalties being zero for most collections, it's hard to sustain that, right? So the way that we view it is we are giving you a digital artifact. So kind of think CryptoPunks, right? Like we are the first 10,000 coming to Bitcoin on Block 9 sats. Like what is the value of owning that digital artifact in itself. So that is kind of the value that we see and what we're doing technically right now is value in itself. Got it. What about you, Longstreet? What's, you know, if there's an artist in the audience, what will you give them as an advice yeah. when they're building their collection? Yeah, I've uh, adopted like a flywheel uh, approach to releasing and growing as an, as an artist. So that starts with making great art. art or whatever it is, whatever your medium is, make it great and make it meaningful to you. Infuse your art with your story and authenticity. Engage with the community, which there's been a great discussion about that earlier. Um, that's, a, that's a major aspect. When you're engaging with the community, you know, you learn more about what your audience might value and that can, in, that, that can influence what you make as an artist. Um, consider releasing one of ones, limited edition, because that can drive exclusivity um, and drive demand. Um, experiment, like we said, with uh, utility and token gating. And then keep reinvesting you know, your own, reinvest in yourself. You know, go to conferences, get the new tech, experiment, and finally like, keep collaborating with other artists. I know for me, that has been the most rewarding part of this journey, has been meeting other people, collaborating, growing as an artist, making works that I would not make on my own, and being challenged um, to meet other artists and grow in that own way. And that kind of flywheel approach, they all feed into each other, and you just keep going and keep turning and grow your audience, grow your brand and, and your style. And uh, it's, just, it's been a beautiful evolution so far, and I'm... I'm really excited to keep it going. Okay, perfect. Since we have one minute left, it's time for the plug in. So is there anything that we should look forward for like OnChain Monkey and Long Street in the next coming months? Um, I think the biggest thing our team is focused on right now is the migration to Bitcoin, like our 10,000, 20,000 collection. Um, not too late to still go to your favorite marketplace and buy the Ethereum version and you will be able to like port over, you're going to burn your Ethereum token and move to Bitcoin. So not too late to join us for either OnChain Monkey Genesis or our Karma collection. Um, another thing I'm excited about, I was, um, I just met uh, with uh, one of our artists, uh, Alexis Andre, who is the artist behind Friendship Bracelets he did with Snowfro for Art Blocks. Um, he's doing a collection collab with OnChain Monkey as well. So they'll be using our OnChain Monkey metadata. He's created 10,000 collection that will be a a uh, very uh, friendly price point to bring a lot of new people into the Ordinals community. So I'm also very excited about that because, um, as you said, it's, it's about educating and, and growing the market for everybody. And you, Longstreet? I'm bullish on creators and what this uh, tech can do, uh, especially for engaging with a new community uh, and a, a new global audience. So if anyone is interested in the creative process, or collaborating. Uh, I'm on Twitter uh, as uh, LongstreetBTC. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you learned something on how to build an NFT brand in the bear market. And thank you for having us today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>